Hello all, this is ComScience for you. Today we'll talk about one of the most handy yet highly underrated methods on the array.prototype. Once you grasp the functioning of this method, you'll probably tend to use it way more. So without further ado, let's get into it straight away. The reduce method as we stated is one of the methods available on the array.prototype. It has the syntax as shown. It takes in a callback function and an initial value as the method parameters. So what does the reduce method do? It literally reduces the array to a single value, that is the reduced value by processing the array. To state it in other words, the array.reduce method calls the callback function supplied to it on the items of the array one by one and then returns the final reduced value of the array to the caller in the end. Let's see how that works in detail. The callback function. The callback function passed to the reduce method gets four parameters passed to it. An accumulator, the array item, its index and the entire array itself. Now wait, what is the accumulator? As we are trying to reduce multiple array items eventually into a single item, there needs to be a variable to hold the cumulative value of the array which will persist during every execution of the function. The accumulator is that value. The accumulator and the items are passed to callback function and whatever value is returned from the function becomes the accumulator for the next iteration. The value returned by the last iteration becomes the actual return value that the callback function returns back to the caller. Here's a little caveat that we must know about the reduce function. It behaves in a slightly different way in the cases when an initial value is supplied and when it is not supplied. Let us first look into the case when we do supply an initial value to the reduce function. The accumulator is assigned the value of the initial value variable. Thus, when the callback function is executed for the first time, the accumulator holds initial value and current item holds the first array item. Whatever that function returns is the accumulator value passed to the function being called on the second array item. And this continues until the value returned by running the function on the last array item is returned to the caller. In case when we do not pass an initial value to the reduce function, here is what happens. The accumulator is straight away assigned the value of the first array item and the function starts being executed on the second array item onwards. Thereafter, it is quite similar to the previous case where the value returned is passed as the accumulator to the function being called on the next array item until finally the value returned by the last item is returned back to the caller. So what is a good use case for using the reduce function? Well, if we are trying to apply some logic on an array wherein we are trying to literally reduce it that is, reduce the number of elements so that we finally get a single value representing the entire array, then we use the reduce function. Textbook examples are the sum and the maximum functions, which we will dig into now. This example code snippet shows us an implementation of the sum of an array using the reduce function. Let's examine what is happening here. As we have passed in an initial value, the accumulator has the value 0 when the function gets called for the very first array element. From that, we return the accumulator plus current value, that is 0 plus 0, which is 0. This gets passed as the accumulator for the next item. From that function, we return 0 plus 1, that is 1, which is passed to the next item, which returns 1 plus 2, that is 3. And finally, 3 plus 3, 6 is returned to the caller. Quite straightforward if we understand it this way. This is an example which implements the max function, that is, finding a maximum from an array of positive numbers. Here, we have passed the smallest positive number possible as the initial value which becomes the accumulator. When function is called for the first array item, 10 is compared with min value, the accumulator, and 10 is returned as it is obviously larger. 10 is passed as the accumulator next. Compared with 4, 10 is returned. Compared with 9 again, 10 is returned. But next, compared with 15, 15 is returned and that is passed as the accumulator next. Which is compared with 5 in the end and 15 is finally returned as the max element from the array. 
we have successfully reduced the array and found out its maxed element so that is some basic understanding about the reduce method you might be surprised that we can implement all the commonly known array methods like map for each using reduce do give it a try also here's a question for you to test your understanding what would the value of the sum in this case be do let us know in the comment section it's a tricky one notice we have not passed any value for the initial value subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos check out our other awesome videos as well let us know how you like this video by hitting that like button see you in the next video until then happy learning